Good morning, everyone, and thanks for having us here today. My name is Gagan Sharma, and my background is in computer science. I've been working in the field of neuroscience from last seven odd years. Today, I'm here with my colleague, Simon Salinas, with whom I work very closely. Simon is a mechanical engineer, but much more a neuroscientist now. Two years before, when Nathan Fagiam presented here his work on image processing and using Scython and Numba, we got inspired and thought we should also present our work from a neuroimaging perspective. So today we will start by telling you why we are here and a little bit about our Python journey. We will briefly introduce our work. Then we will expose an agile image viewer customized to visually check brain scans. Um, we will show you the benefits of navigating image headers with PyDicom. This is very useful when sorting and de-identifying um, medical images which contain sensitive data. And we will conclude with an example of how a few lines of Python code helps us to manage uh, million dollar clinical trials to manage uh, remote processing machines around the world. We started coming to PyCon with the motivation of learning and now we're happy to present our work here for the first time. Um, we're relatively new to this community. Gagan has been to um, Python since 2013, and last year was my first time. So we felt like outliers at the beginning, since most of you guys are professional programmers. But uh, this community is very welcoming, so um, now we're very excited again to uh, share our work with you. I'm not a programmer. I barely knew what Linux was when I started working in this field. Uh, but with time, I became comfortable with uh, MATLAB and Bash scripting. And I noticed Gagan was coming back from this type of conferences very excited, talking about Python. And I asked him um, one question, well, why bother traveling so much when uh, information is abundant out there and you can pretty much learn anything on Google these days? And uh, he laughed at me and forced me to come to PyCon with him last year. Then I understood that there's some type of uh, knowledge or inspiration that um, you can only um, that you cannot absorb by Googling everything on an isolated corner. So this motivated us to start using Python more in our work and implementing the kind of tools that we heard about in this type of talks. Now, Gagan will tell you about the type of work we do, and then we will explain how Python makes our life easier when handling medical images. I will begin uh, by telling you what we do at our work, and this is us at the Brain Imaging Lab. We are constantly receiving images from the local scanners and the sites around the world. We process this data to enhance its value and output pretty pictures and data for high quality publications and for a clinical translation. Before showing you how, Python, how we use Python in neuroscience, I need to tell you what is DICOM and what sort of images we work all the time. I know some of you already know DICOM, DICOM is a standard for handling, storing, printing, and transmitting information in medical imaging. The imaging part of it contains an image and an information about it is called header. It is the language of medical imaging equipment. It's always worth telling the complexities in DICOM, but in short, these are the images with a lot of information embedded into a file. DICOM has many flavors as ice cream does. Sometimes the people implement their own way, breaks your code, hence there is always the chance for an element of surprise. Last but not the least, everything in DICOM is a tag, whether it's a patient information, data information, doctor's information, where it was taken is a tag. And also the pixel data itself is represented by a tag. We all know that every development has a story and so does this. One day we were approached by a clinician at work who needed a 3D data viewer with a very specific needs. He wants to read DICOM and other imaging formats. He wants it to be platform independent. He wants to use it as a module in the language of his own choice. And he wants it to be quick so that he can change the contrast level of an image quickly and whatnot. I did not say no to him, not because I'm an Indian. I thought it's a great opportunity for us to learn how to develop the 3D medical imaging data viewer. But then why to reinvent the wheel when there are so many good viewers already available in the market? 
Mind it, these are not the good DICOM viewers. These are the viewers with the great functionality and strengths. But in this particular situation, they were not ticking the boxes which were required. So I started looking for a programming language of which I could use to develop the 3D data viewer. We all know that these are the two dimensions in which most of the programming language fall. But I'm always keen to use Python because I find it easy to learn and implement. So I start Googling again. <laughs> I thought, okay, whether the Python is suitable for my high performance computing and Google said yes. Only if I can start with a code which is readable. Really? Is there something on re readable? I can barely read my own code which I wrote three months before. And on the top, I need to merge it with the pre, you know, some cool pre-existing compiled libraries. I thought, okay, if it's true for one minute, what I can do with that? It's possible, then, then I will be able to focus on the fun part, which is a science part here, and I will be still able to develop an application with less effort, more impact, without worrying about the nuts and bolts of a GUI. So I start looking around the packages on Google. We all know that Grime also explained. Maya V, VizPy, both very nice packages. And VizPy is also supported with some research publications, but very mouthful for me. I thought only Spartacus can do that in, no, in such a short notice. I can't. So I start looking again. I found a PyQD graph. Especially this picture on the web page took my attention. I thought, hang on, the brain image looks like what we do all the time. And maybe this could be adapted to our needs. Looking into, I start looking into its feature speed. We all know that if you're doing something which needs a rapid plot, update, video, or real-time activity, this is for you. It's a pure Python package, which means that it runs virtually on every platform supported by NumPy and PyQD Graph, no compiling required, and this portability made our life easy. It's much more than a plotting library. It strives, uh, it strives to cover many aspects of science and engineering, application development. So that's how my baby step started. I downloaded it, I started reading the examples. I would like to emphasize here, this code was so easy to follow and so easy to understand, which I never thought before. So this is all I did. I wrote only 24 lines of code. So, you can see a bit of a knowledge of NumPy where I'm reading my uh, medical data into a NumPy arrays, bit of a knowledge of uh, a SciPy. What I got? I got, this is the original PyQt graph example. I injected this code with those 24 lines of code and Merry Christmas, I got a 3D data viewer running in no time, which could display most of the medical images, which was very useful for slicing the multi-dimensional images at an arbitrary angle. It is honestly a great tool for a CT and MRI, and it's a very interactive tool. Let me show you the tool itself. Sure. Oh, it's coming? Yep, that's fine. We can't see on our screen, so I have to see it there. So, hang on. Where is my mouse? Try this a bit no, that's fine. That's fine. So, the first, I can easily change the contrast level. I can see where most of the intensities are lying. I can go through uh, the slices using the fast and the slow up and arrow keys, and this is what the researcher was looking. I can see the data quickly, and I can cut it at any particular arbitrary angle. I can zoom in, zoom out, very responsive. I haven't seen anything in Python so responsive. So let's get back to our presentation. This is us using this medical view at our work, clinicians and along with me. What we were able to do this with, with this GUI, we were able to review the 400 patients, each having a three different scans at three different time points. We were able to review them visually in a simple loop and recorded the response of our clinicians. It's helping us to review the data for the publications. And how much I wrote? 24 lines. This is how I felt. I felt like a <laughs> Spartacus, not a Spartacus who can cut the difficult code using my PySor and save my work with my 3D data viewer. But mind it, we started showing you the viewer, but before you load the data into the viewer, you know, it comes up in a one single folder of 100,000 files, complete mess. You have to sort it in a way so that you can navigate nicely, and that's where PyDICOM comes in, which made our lives easy. And now Simon will explain to you how we use PyDICOM in our work. That's right. Um, I'll show you a great Python tool we discovered to process medical images. 
These are the raw medical images coming from the scanner. And here is where we have some flexibility to use Python for image processing. After this, we use other specialized packages that take care of outputting these beautiful maps depending on the type of information you want to extract from a brain scan. We will show you how we use Python in the processing stage of this pipeline. This is what you usually get from the scanner, a data set with disorganized files dumped into a single folder. We use PyDICOM to output a nice folder structure that makes sense to scientists, that is, data sorted by patient name, study date, and the type of scan acquired within that study. As Gagan mentioned, DICOM alone is an extensive field that could easily take up a whole presentation. Um, what you basically need to know is that DICOMs were created with the aim to uh, standardize medical images coming from different sources. And this is done by embedding critical information into the tags. These are the getter headers Gagan was talking about. And we need to access these tags to create organized folder structures. With PyDICOM, you can navigate these structures and store them in handy Python uh, variables, as I will show you in the next slide. I know it might seem like a mouthful of code. We have Python on top. We have Bash on the bottom. Uh, they achieve the same result. Uh, but tell me, which um, method do you find more intuitive? You're probably Python biased, so I know the answer for that. But um, for us, uh, we find it very convenient as you read the headers and they become variables straight away. And there's less fiddling around with regular expressions. This is how we do it on the command line. So we start by importing the PyDICOM library. Now we assign the DICOM image to a variable. And now we can use uh, the read function to s access all of the headers. And here I can see all of the headers stored in a Python data structure. Even the pixel data is referenced here. I can also print, um, for example, patient name or name, study date, and the place where it was acquired. Again, we find it easier to navigate through the Python structures as the bash alternative takes a lot more effort and string manipulation to store the headers. But we need to modify these headers often because uh, medical data is regarded as sacred data due to privacy legislations, mainly around the first world. Some tags have doctor's name, patient age, hospital address, and other private data. So it's important to de-identify them properly when sharing it with other sites. Here's an example of how we do this with Python. Back to the command line. I'm trying to load a patient name, and I'm going to give it a dummy name. And I'm also going to change the hospital name. And here you go. We have de-identified those two headers. So there are plenty of private tags. Um, but the neat thing here is that you don't need to have a loop uh, to go through all of these values to uh, remove these tags. We can um, remove all of this in one hit with uh, inbuilt py, uh, PyDICOM libraries. And we also have the flexibility to save the de-identified image in any format without overriding the original ones. That was just for a single image, but this process can be easily scripted to scan a whole data set and output a desired folder structure. Here's an example of how we run the code for sorting and de-identifying. I'm not going to go through the whole code. Um, it is available in Bitbucket. But one thing worth mentioning, though, is that we were able to improve it after coming coming to PyCon last year and hearing about a couple of libraries. Scandir, uh, mentioned by Juan Nunes Iglesias, to go through all files more efficiently and improve uh, reading speed. We tried this instead of os.walk and found that it was not working at the beginning, but then Gagan. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we heard about this library, we got very excited. We went back, we started using it. We could not re achieve the same results. So I had a few email exchange with Ben, the developer, and find out it was some NFS and other issues. 
And uh, eventually once that was sorted, this library really made our code super fast and everyone was so excited to use these libraries. Yeah. That's right. We also used uh, docops to simplify parsing arguments into our script. This one was particularly handy as the usage function gets written automatically as you specify the input arguments. We're also having a look at pandas for handling um, data structures after hearing Lex Hyder's talk last year. While we were talking about medical imaging here, I would like to emphasize um, this could be any digital image with data and headers. So even if you're not from neuroscience, storing headers into variables and using Python to manage the data can be very useful. We will finish with a quick example of a Python script that has helped us to monitor machines across Australia, New Zealand, and Taiwan. We have around uh, 30 remote machines used for automated processing in several clinical trials, and it's important to make sure they're running 24-7. With a few lines of Python code, we're able to detect signals coming from each machine and deliver an automated report into our inbox every morning. This is probably basic for those of you working in IT, but uh, we were quite excited to get a daily summary telling us every day if um, any of the machines were down close to full capacity or failing to connect to the local hospital scanner. And what we liked most is the simplicity and readability, readability of this code, um, allowing us to have so much power with just a few lines of code. To summarize, the scientific community usually has their own preference on which software packages you use for image processing. But it's always possible to use Python to replace or pre-process data more effectively. Python provides readable code that can be easily adapted for um, custom Im image viewing and also for careful manipulation of sensitive data. Lastly, we're very grateful for PyCon inspiration that allows us to develop three excellent tools. So uh, come to this type of conferences to um, absorb what Google alone cannot provide. We would like to conclude by sharing the few lessons we learned from the main aspects of our workflow, which we discussed uh, today. You must have seen uh, the data processing using PyDICOM, as Simon explained, data visualization using PyQuery Graph, and the server reporting management using Python's API. But there are times when we still have to use other software packages to support these three very important aspects of our work. We all know that it's not easy to change people process, and the technology in a very well-established workflow, but also we are getting there. At our work now, we are trying to use Python in every possible uh, situation, not because Python is agile, fast, portable, but we also strongly believe that in these exciting times, we can achieve anything with Python. The good thing is that if you're very specific about your software tools, Python has the flexibility to join these tools together and in short, Python can be a glue with an infinite possibilities. So in the near future, we will be focusing on a Python-based NIPI, or NIPI, for analyzing our structural uh, neuroimaging data and pipeline, uh, neuroimaging data, and for scientific pipelining. We also realized today that, uh, uh, after looking at the program that Sam will be presenting later today on the scientific pipelines, so we're also looking forward to that very particular talk. And, uh, and I learned for using these for the statistical techniques and PyXNAT for XNAT, which facilitates the common management productivity and quality assurance task for imaging and other associated data sets. Uh, we hope this talk has been useful to show how Python tools can help in uh, neuroscience imaging. Um, we strongly recommend to infect your colleagues with the Python spirit so they can enhance their learning as it happened to me with Kagan. Please come and talk to us if you have any questions or feedback anytime. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much.